wondered why it is on some web pages, instead of just simple bullets, you've got these cool little images. Um, maybe you want to create something like a check mark for your bullet list or a circle with a little chevron or you wanted to do some kind of a graphic. Uh, I'm going to do just a very short uh, series where I'm going to cover creating background bullets, uh, background images that you can use as a bullet on your website. And I'm going to show you how to do it in Photoshop. So let's go ahead and get Photoshop open. And we're going to use some of the vector tools uh, to handcraft our own bullets exactly the way we want to make them. Now, of course, I should make this disclaimer that I am using ancient technology. I've got Photoshop CS4. Um, and I have access to CS5. I'm going to do CS4 because I actually like a little backwards compatibility. So those of you watching the video, you might have a more recent version of Photoshop. Well, this should work. And by the way, these tools have been around since version, I don't know, five, I think, of uh, Photoshop that I recall. So we're going to go ahead and open it up and we're going to use those tools now. And here we go in Photoshop. My recommendation, by the way, all your vector tools are stored just under all your raster graphic tools. And I like to start by designing big, and I can always reduce the image size. So since we're going to be working on using vector graphics, the nice thing is you can resize to any size you like. I like to begin with a canvas of about 200 by 200. I could go larger if I want, but I think if I go too large, I'm a little bit getting a little excessive here. I made it square because most bullets should roughly be the same width and height. Now, there's going to be exceptions. That's understandable. What I want to do is go through each of the tools and the various ways we can create them. Now, you can craft them using uh, raster graphics, using marquees and things, but I really like the, I like to use vector tools for this. And by the way, you can do this in Adobe Illustrator or some other, um, some other vector graphic tool. I'm just going to focus on Photoshop because that's the tool I'm most comfortable with and most familiar with. Um, anyway, a lot of these will work very similar. We have the pen tool and uh, the horizontal type tool, and we got some shape tools. And then there's this one tool here called the direct selection. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you uh, the three main vector tools, the pen tool. I will show you the horizontal type tool and the various shape tools. These all create vector graphics, also known as shapes. And then this tool right here is the direct selection tool that allows us to modify the shapes. So you can actually put one in and make changes to it. Now, under the pen tool, we have some other tools that will help you modify as well your uh, shapes. Before we go much further, one of the settings, you want to look at the settings along the top because you will see that I am using this setting right here, which allows us to see, it creates what's called shape layers. It'll let us see the, the various uh, points that go from path to path as we complete our shape. Um, and then uh, also, I want you to note, you can adjust style over here and you can adjust color. For now, we're going to keep the color like it is. I'm going to go in and just show you a couple things. So you can go in and you can draw with the pen tool and you can go point by point in drawing your shapes. Now I'm not saying you want to create a bullet that looks like this, but I just wanted to show you a general characteristic of the pen tools that you can click point to point and make sort of a geometric type shape. That's the, not the only way we can do it. Uh, before we go into much detail, I wanted to point out the layers over here and notice it says shape. This is creating a shape layer. Um, and then if we hide the background, we can see that it's transparent on the outside. Okay, so I'm going to toss that because I want to show you a couple ways you can manage the pen tool. And let's zoom in on this just a little bit too. All right, I want to get this pretty close to full. I'm going to click fit screen so it'll fit in there. Get my pen tool back. And I want to show you, you can go point to point and it creates straight lines, right? It's the shortest distance between two points. Well, if you want to make it longer uh, by curving, you can click, hold the mouse down, and then drag. And as you drag, you create two handles. One is for the outgoing curve and one is the incoming. And you can guess that the incoming is the top one that you see. However, if I move it around, it you, you can see that I can move it all the way around. So one is, uh, and you'll see, this is creating a handle on both sides, outgoing, incoming. So you notice it creates that curve going in. 
Well, I don't even have to click and drag. If I just click again, that outgoing curve creates another curve right there. So you get like this wave shape here. Um, and so I just wanted to point it out. As you, you do this, you can click and drag if you want to make curves. And so this can take, uh, within moments you can be experimenting with it, but this can take a long time to sort of develop and enhance your skills. A couple other things I want to point out while we're talking about the pen tool is um, you can uh, use, if you hold this down, you can use the convert point tool. And now what this does, it allows you to adjust both the points. So I can click and adjust and the handle. So you see how it does the handle there. But if I hover over the handle itself, I can adjust just one handle at a time. What's cool about this is before, let's say I, I didn't want them to be straight lines. I can go to existing point click and drag and now I've got my curve lines for that as well. When I hover over the point I can adjust each one separately. And so there's a lot of power in the pen tool. Of course with much power comes much uh, frustration at times as you might be trying to develop you know and work on your skills here. And you'll see notice that line that that straight line there doesn't seem to want to change at all. And I think it's because I just completed the shape that way. Um, let me put a pen tool back in. I want to click. Yeah, I, apparently I never finished that. And when I clicked at the end, now it is finished. And I can go back in and do the convert point. I can also click on here. This is called the direct selection tool. And I can click on a point and then I can get that and I can adjust the handles. Um, and so if I click on it, it allows me to adjust the existing handles. The one thing it doesn't do as well is it doesn't let me actually get, like if I didn't create a handle before, it doesn't give me that handle. I will have to go back and use the convert point tool. Um, there's also the path selection tool and if you click on it, it lets you select the entire path. And you'll see I can't adjust individual points. That's because that's for the path. This is the direct selection tool. And then if you want to take a point and add handles and get them where they didn't exist before, you can do that. So there's a hundred different ways we can sort of play around and practice with this. So I am not going to go into how to use only the pen tool to do all the shapes you want. I don't even know what shapes you want to do, and that's kind of up to you. So that's just one thing. Uh, before I move on and do anything else, I want to go over, let's get the pen tool back so that I get this window here. Um, something you probably should take note of is under style. If I click on here, there's a set of pre-built styles. And if I click my shape and change the style, I had to click it. I can add these new styles in here. Now they look kind of weird. That's because I zoomed in on it. Um, honestly, most of these styles I don't care for. I don't think they're that good. And so the one I had here was, a, I think it was this. Let's double check. Oh no, that's notice there's those little bright halo effect kind of thing. I don't think that's a good idea. And so that was that style. Um, or you can just get rid of the style and then whatever color you set is the color that you have there. And so you can adju adjust it using the different color pal palettes. And um, so there's a lot of different variations that you can use there. Okay. Uh, one of the nice things about the some of the colors, you can make it so it's easier to see the paths that go around it. You can also do this opacity you can change. And notice with the changed opacity, we can still click. And now we can adjust these handles. We can see the handles a lot better and then we can go back and readjust the opacity. So there's just some things for you to think about. So those are all the tools related to the pen and that's taken us over nine minutes to just cover. So what I want to do now is just cover a couple more items. I'm going to hide that layer. I don't need to see it. Uh, let's talk about type because there's a whole set of fonts that allow for symbols such as webdings. Now notice the size of this font is really large. If I type the letter N I'll get a shape that's actually using that font. Now if I hold down shift and I type N, look at that shape that I have. I'm going to move that down a little bit. This is using webdings. And so one of the things you should know about webdings is first of all, um, 
if let's go ahead and highlight this if for some reason you type in a font using the horizontal type tool and you have a setting on here something like this okay if you have that setting there and um, this is going to make it hard to modify now you could leave the text exactly as it is and let that be your bullet and that might not be a bad bullet let's go ahead and hide the background and one of the things that I do sometimes when I'm done is crop it so I'm gonna just crop it a little bit so I can see just kind of this is what it might be like a bullet I hit enter and now um, when you're ready to save you're gonna choose file save for web and devices and you can see it here now this is a very large image size plus this is a JPEG I want to see what it looks like with invisibility and I'm gonna reduce this down to 25 and that's 25 by 17 now look at how much smaller that bullet is and let's just double check with JPEG that's what it looked like with the solid background that's probably visible uh, but you just be warned you want to see what it looks like small to know if it's gonna work or not now I'm not quite done so let me go back to this uh, full size I kind of jumped the gun a little bit here what I want to show you is what if we want to take this and make modification to it like we are modifying our shape well you would go over here and you think oh let's just click here and we'll click on our shape and no it's not a shape and it says it cannot select a layer because the point you clicked is not inside the vector mask of a visible layer that is actually a type layer so what I can try to do is I can try to convert this into a shape and there it is I just right click on the layer convert to shape however it won't let me do that because it has a faux bold style so I take that off and then I try it again and guess what's gonna happen it's gonna convert it so for whatever reason bold doesn't work italicized does so let's zoom in on here and let's make a few edits to our path click on here there's that point I can change using the various ones here direct selection tool pull that out and now I've got a, a stylized eye and I can click on this point here and bring, maybe bring it down and then maybe I want to use that tool again and do a little something here to pull that in and and now I've made some edits I click any other tool hide the back or I can show the background hide the background and so I can modify that now I've run out of time so in the next tutorial I'm going to talk about the shape tools there's not a lot um, so I think I'll wrap up with the, sh the using the custom shape tool on the next video and then I'll show you exporting your graphics and starting how to use them in a web page so stay tuned for that video